Oh, hell of beard, it's your boy Big Beard B, and we back for another edition of Big Beard Business. Now, today's video comes to you by way of subscriber's choice. I was going through some of my Instagram comments lately. I've been trying to dive into those a bit more. I know it takes me a while to get through them. I apologize. But look, it's just one of me. I'm trying, baby. I'm trying the best I can. So here's the thing. Um, one of the subscribers hit me up and said, yo, B. I feel like you should hit up this video. And I'm like, what the video is, cuz? And he's like, no, man, here we go. Uh, top five OG fragrances versus top five blankets and I thought this concept could be cool and I spent a ton of time in my room trying to figure out what fragrances to grab here and I wanted to make sure that these fragrances really made an impact within fragrance world so I um, only have five with me today but we can continue to do this if you like this video but I thought it was a cool idea so if you like to hear it let's get down to big beard business now the first group of fragrances that I have here have become legendary both in their own right. This first fragrance sold millions upon millions of bottles and the creator of this fragrance went on to do great things on his own within his own fragrance house. So this fragrance that I'm talking about first up comes from Jean-Paul Gaultier and this one is Le Mal. Now Le Mal for me was not an instant love but once it clicked, I mean it clicked. I was into this fragrance for a long time. But <laughs> I think another thing about this fragrance which really uh, amped its popularity is that you could smell it everywhere. This thing had major performance and then it also smelled great in the air. Um, I know a lot of people who use this fragrance for a number of reasons and I know a lot of people out there who oversprayed this thing <laughs> far too many times. So here's the thing, I've had this fragrance in my collection not this particular bottle, but this fragrance just, it's been in there since high school, okay? So this is just a fragrance that has been around forever and a day. Now I have tried other flankers within this series, but one that has stood out to me and likely most of you out there as well is obviously Ultramar, okay? This thing here was a clubbing king and it's still extremely well-received fragrance. Now, I know I've talked about fragrances being out of style and that's, again, this is not tied back to either of these fragrances in terms of how they smell. I'm talking about the trends, okay, of what fragrance companies are offering today versus what they did before. However, if you're looking to utilize either one of these fragrances, I think these will be great fragrances for you to smell like. Um, these things have stood the test of times in terms of their scent profiles they really perform jump off the skin and there has been some conversation about reformulations and not projecting as much as they once did or the longevity not being as great as they once were but the scent profile on these things are wonderful to say the least so here we have it you have Lamar and Ultramar I need you down in the comment section choose one which one of these things would you select I think if I had to choose one it's the goat now with that round, we had the battle of legendary fragrances. And this go around, we have a legendary fragrance and one that I think will eventually be legendary. At least in my book, it's definitely going to get there. And this one comes from um, Paco Rabanne. You guys already know what these things are. They come in the gold bottle. We pop enough of the gold bottles. And this one is a one million, okay? One million was a beast of a fragrance, okay? This is another one that you really couldn't go many places and not smell. This fragrance was great for clubbing because it really cut through a lot of the other scents that you would get inside a club. And this one here also garnered you a ton of compliments. The longevity on this thing, amazing. Projection, amazing. Performance, amazing. And um, really, you just felt like a million bucks wearing this fragrance. No pun intended. I guess all puns intended there. And and as they follow up a fragrance within this collection now listen they've done a lot of great fragrances I wouldn't really be doing them justice to say otherwise but this next fragrance is one that um, really gets me good here and this one comes from Paco Rabanne obviously and this is one million lucky now one million lucky just takes that original DNA and takes it to another level we have some cool notes in this thing you have that plum you have the hazelnut and it just really 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 takes this fragrance to a whole different level now this one does perform it has projection it has longevity it doesn't still have that same cloudiness if you will for this fragrance that it had but this one here 
um, has been a staple within my collection. I know a lot of you hit me up like, yo, B, I picked this thing up. I enjoy it. It's amazing. And some of you are like, yo, you know what? Nah, dog, I'm not feeling it. Um, um, someone actually just wrote on a comment for this one here. It said, wear this one if you want to smell feminine. I respectfully disagree with that one. This one is not a feminine scent to me. It does have some sweet notes in these, um, which I think is needed to help with that compliment factor. Just my personal opinion on this, okay? So, two solid fragrances. The only thing that I would say this one has really over this one is this one is as popular obviously this one has been around for a long long time and a lot of people have been able to wear this fragrance so if you're in a dating scene i would tell you to avoid this one and go here because it's less likely that the girl that you're pursuing or the woman that you're pursuing has smelled this one on their uh ex or date or something like that this is definitely one to wear when you want to smell great and get lucky but if i had to break it down which one of these things wins this is a tough one. This is a tough one because they do so many different things for so many different reasons. But because of where I am in the stage of my life right now, I'm gonna go with Lucky, all right? Lucky is El Captain, okay? I don't know if that's a word or not, but definitely uh, a winner in my book. So this next group of fragrances brings us to our midpoint on this list. And this is another tough lineup of fragrances when you go versus the OG versus one of the most established flakers out there. And I think a lot of you will enjoy this, this lineup here. So this next one comes from Valentino and this one is Valentino Womo. Now Valentino Womo is a classic feeling fragrance. Everything about this fragrance is screams elegance and sophistication from the bottle presentation just to the name in itself it really just stands out but you can't have all that without having the flanker and one of the best-selling flankers of this fragrance one of the most popular ones out there is valentino womo intense okay now valentino womo spun a ton of flankers whether it was intense um noir absolute you also had um the aqua series and you had the Ooh essence and the list goes on and obviously now you have uh, Valentino Womo born in Roma, which takes that totally different spin on the DNA. And I really don't feel like it's close to the DNA at all. That one is really just a company really hopping on some of the friggin' trends that are out there today to make it trendy and on par with what the friggin' companies are out there releasing today. I feel like these fragrances really transcend well across generations, whether if you're in, in high school or your college, you know, your sophisticated gentleman, businessman, whatever, CEO, these fragrances will work for you. Now, the first two fragrances that we talked about really hit the ground more so in that clubbing scene. They were loud, some thought were obnoxious fragrances, um, but they were extremely well received. While these two here really take a more refined approach to fragrance. Now, um, they have some key notes in there. This one is that darker, more sophisticated blend of this original fragrance here, but these both do wonders i think if i had to compare these obviously this one is the standout champ between the two in my humble opinion i would love to know if you differ if your opinion differs comment down below and let us know that as well but valentino womo intense versus valentino womo the original intense takes it all day now this next set of fragrances really honed in on the note of patchouli and they kept that patchouli note alive and well through every flanker that has released of this fragrance and some have been great and some not so great in my personal opinion and really choosing the fragrance to go up against the original was a difficult task because there are a lot of fragrances within this lineup and a lot that uh, are extremely well received you may already know the fragrance company that i'm talking about but this one comes from mugler and this one is the original Amen. Okay, so Amen had this char patchouli type of feel, and it also had amazing performance. This thing here really was a standout scent for a few reasons. It had this um, nice, elegant feel to it, and it really just lasted a long time. So, along with that, obviously, the success of a fragrance like this, you're gonna have others and one of the ones that i decided to go with to go this head-to-head -head battle is pure havan this fragrance just really took that original dna and made it something entirely different um now this is one of the most popular spin-offs or flankers of this fragrance obviously this one here pure havan you also have pure malt that can really run neck and neck in terms of how these fragrances are received within the fragrance community and often pure havan and pure malt get um 
tied on list for fragrances that you can wear in a specific um, occasion. So this one here really took a different approach in terms of utilizing that patchouli note, also adding in some, some smoke and cigar notes or that tobacco to really just take this uh, just another level. This one just really took this original DNA and gave it a Cuba, Cuban cigar type of twist to it. Um, I, I'm excited for both of these fragrances um, every time I see them. I don't talk about this one much. Um, I don't think I've talked about this one here uh, much lately, but I was doing a live stream with a few other guys out there and we went through this house and dived into all the flankers that they had and they got some bangers, man. So very solid. And if I had to choose one, obviously this is the building block, but my personal choice in terms of um, like over this one. Uh, I'm going to choose uh, Pure Havan over the original Amen as the go-to scent of choice. Now this fifth and final combination here is a fragrance house that has been around for a while. Um, actually they're, they're a designer company and they do extremely great things in terms of their clothing and their fragrances have really performed as well. This next one, the original one, came out in 2017 or maybe, yeah, 2017. <laughs> and this one here is the flanker of it. So you have the original Y, and obviously one of the most popular fragrance um, flankers from this collection is YEDP. Now, YEDP was received much greater than why but why in itself really did well or else they wouldn't have come out with a flanker now these fragrances are regarded for the men out there who are just going to tackle the day um very casually the white tee jacket and jeans and be prepared to just really take everything on and i think that these fragrances really do extremely well for those purposes if you're looking for a fragrance that you could grab and really rock on almost any occasion, then I think this collection here really has, you have the Y, you have Y EDP, you have Y Live, and you also have the latest one, which is Y O Fresh. Um, but if I had to kind of, let's really look at these two here and see which one is going to tackle the day, I think most of you are going to lean with this one just as I would. Now this one wasn't an immediate love for me because I really did love this one, but what happened um, is after wearing this one over and over again, this one just really began to just sit well on my skin and I understood the true depth and dimension of this fragrance. So YEDP is the winner there. Now what I will say for all of these fragrances here, it's sometimes, not sometimes, it's difficult a lot of times to really approve upon a fragrance that has been extremely well received. What happens is you're going to have the expectations of the original and most people are going to compare it to that. Like, hey, does this make sense? Does it matter? Should I even have it? And I think these fragrances um, really are positioned well. So there you have it. I, think, I feel like in most of these cases, four out of the five, that the first one I'm real still iffy on, whether it's going to be Ultra Mall or the original Lil Mall, um, which one is going to really take the cake there. But it looks like in each of these cases, the uh, flanker for me has taken the cake of the top winner i would love to hear your take on these fragrances down below if you need to see a part two or part three of this let me know because it was really hard to choose what fragrances should go into this so there you have it as always i'm your boy big b beat and with the like comment and subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend that we are back again you already know what i need you to do be an og and hit the goddamn bell